Eh, los últimos eh, proyectos de inteligencia artificial están eh, dejando algunos argumentos eh, con dudas en el mercado en torno a si se traducirán en eh, beneficios eh, futuros. Recordemos que... Esos acuerdos mil millonarios de OpenAI, de NVIDIA y un largo etcétera para las AMD, Broadcom y compañía que están dejando subidas muy importantes en caliente pero quizá para 2026 no se traduzcan los beneficios soñados. Así pues la pregunta del millón, ¿estamos ante una nueva burbuja como ya ocurriera a principios de los 2000 con la crisis de las .com? Vamos a hablar de ello con un experto en la materia, saludamos a Jan Kawalirek, enviado especial del gobierno checo para la inteligencia artificial. Hi Jan, good morning. Good morning from Expand North Star, I'm honored to be here with you. Well, uh... Are we facing an AI uh, investment bubble uh, similar like to the dot, plo, dot com uh, bubble? I don't think so, actually. You know, I, I really believe in AI as a technology. Of course, we need to find the proper ways how to use AI as a technology to advance our industry, to provide our people with better services, better state services, you know, how to Uh, get more competitive uh, industry, for example, how to adapt AI in businesses. But I think that it's, it's, a real, it's, it's a real thing, it's a real tool that can improve our efficiency, both as people as, as, and as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it's possible, uh, could the ratings uh, be considered uh, high? Uh, what indicators uh, might uh, suggest uh, that the sector is overvalued? Well, of course, there is a lot of investments in AI companies lately, uh, that is for sure. But I, I still think that there is a fundament, you know, behind these, uh, these investments. Because if we look at the biggest companies, uh, even regarding the valuation on, on the market, uh, of course, there is a fundament behind it, you know. We really think that they, they can advance the effectiveness of AI of businesses, you know, we see, we see that it, uh, it improved the efficiency, it improved the prosperity uh, of the countries. So I, I really think that it's not overvalued. Do uh, you really think uh, some companies are promising uh, more than they can actually deliver? Well, of course, we can look uh, at the fundamentals of the companies, you know, it's uh, it's individual story for, for all of them, you know, but I think that as a sector, uh, that AI is, has got really a great potential for the economy, you know, and worldwide, and we can see the investments all over the, all over the world, it's not just US right now, I'm here in, in Dubai at Expand North Star, you know, and in Jitex Global, and you can see all the opportunities, you can see the investments all around here, and there are people all over the world, here in one place at one time, and they are looking for the in investments. So uh, I, I really think that uh, we are on a great track to, uh, to explore uh, AI throughout the, the economy. Oh, okay, uh, let's talk about the future, uh, Jan. Uh, which uh, technologies or models uh, do you believe uh, will drive the next uh, major leap in AI? Well, of course, AI is a, is a technology, you know, so one day we, it will be adapted across all the, all the businesses as a tool. For example, if we look at the situation in Czechia or in Central uh, Europe, we can see that year by year the adoption of AI uh, technology in businesses has, has doubled. You know? So it's going very fast, but we will reach one day that AI will be uh, used everywhere to reach uh, greater efficiency. So after that, probably, we will, we will go even further. We will adapt new technologies. So, for example, I think that quantum technology, quantum computing, also together with AI, and I'm talking about uh, hybrid computation powers right now, can be, uh, can be the follow-up based on uh, AI computing. So, for example, once again, in all over the Europe, I think that there's a lot of investment in quantum computational power. Right now, for example, uh, in Czechia, just two weeks ago, we launched a new quantum computer. Of course, we are talking about research and development right now. It's not in a, in a real production, in, in a real business, but we are at the very beginning of this technology, you know. 
So I think that we are on the edge of, of something very important, something disruptive. And let's see, for example, what Quantum can bring to the market and can bring to the companies. Uh, are there uh, any limitations, Jan? Uh, what technical or scientific uh, limitations are we still uh, facing? Of course, there are some some limitations or some challenges that that we uh, have to have to face and that we have to deal with. Uh, even with the quantum computing, of course, as it is quite a new new technology. For example, regarding the cooling system, you know, and regarding uh, some of the, the the mistakes that the quantum computing still still have. And but this is the reason why we are still in a R and D phase. Uh, and once we will, once we will solve these kind of challenges, I really believe that the quantum computing will be like a synergy to, to AI systems nowadays and it will boost the AI. You know? Because for example, if we are talking uh, about drug discovery, if we are talking about simulations, visualizations, you know, digital twins, all of these are the sectors where the quantum computing can, can thrive and can really, really move us to a different next level. Um, uh, them, uh, do you think, uh, or how will AI transform uh, employment in the next five, uh, ten years? This is a great challenge uh, from my point of view, you know, because uh, the impact on the labor market will be will be massive. That that's for sure, and we have to be prepared for that. Actually, it was one of the the most important topics even here at at, at uh, Expand North Star at Jitex. How, how the countries should deal with impact of AI on the, on the labor market. But uh, from my perspective, I think that uh, the, the greatest answer is through upskilling, is through education. We really need to educate people how they can use AI tools to be more effective in, in their everyday tasks and of course during, during their work, you know. Because when we will be able to use AI safely, trustworthy, then we will be able to, to adapt. And of course, there will be some changes on the, on the labor market, uh, mostly regarding the structure uh, of the jobs present on the labor market. But I really believe in people, you know, I really believe that we are able to adapt ourselves, that we are able to educate ourselves, and that we will, we will find a way how to create new jobs using AI, so there will be no like a big, increase of unemployment, for example. And finally, uh, could AI become uh, as uh, fundamental an infrastructure uh, as electricity or, or, or the internet? I believe so, yeah, that's a great question. I believe that it, it, it will be uh, quite soon, actually, it will be fundamental. And uh, we, uh, as a European Union, we have to prepare for that. And this is, for example, the reason why uh, I'm a great supporter of new initiatives coming from European Commission. For example, AI Gigafactories. You know, we, we all know that the European Commission has, has a goal to create five of these AI Gigafactories all over the European Union. And we are talking about massive computational power with 100,000 plus AI chips to, to, to develop, to train the latest AI models. And I really think that when we are talking about digital sovereignty here, we really should, should be ambitious as European Union. We really should invest in this infrastructure to be able to train our own models and then we can adapt it in businesses, we can adapt it in, in state services, we can provide AI models for free to the people, for example, to use it for R&D, etc. So these investments are very crucial, crucial and after we will build this infrastructure, I really believe that AI can be like a fundamental thing in everyday life. Ok, uh, uh, Jan uh, Kawalirek, enviado especial del gobierno checo para la IA. Uh, thank you for coming to Negotes TV. Thank you for having me here. Thank you and greetings from Expand North Star.